So factoring started to seem really easy. And then your teacher puts this number in front of the x squared and all of a sudden it becomes complicated again. I'm Adam Reich with WonderfulTutor.com. Let's make this easy. Let's start with the problem 3x squared minus 16x minus 12. As usual, we're going to get two sets of parentheses set up and we're going to put an x on the left side as usual. Of course, we're leaving a little bit of space in front of both of those x's and we'll talk about that later. Now, let's just get this out of the way. I don't want you thinking about negatives or positives at all. Do the signs at the very end of the problem. With that in mind, we're going to start with the number furthest on the right, that being 12. And we're going to write down all the factors of 12. That's uh, 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. And then we're going to get to the first new step of these more complicated factoring problems. We're going to actually get all the factors of this number over here on the left. In this case, that's 3. So 1 and 3, and that's it. Now we're going to enter into the trial and error phase of the problem, where we do a lot of little testing. Now what we're going to do is we're going to choose a factoring pair from each of the two columns. And we're going to choose the factors that are closest together, because those are usually the correct answer. Not always, but usually. So in this case, we're going to choose 1 and 3, and we're going to choose 3 and 4. Next phase of the problem is pretty simple. We're just going to multiply the two numbers on the left. So that'll be 1 times 3 is 3. And then we're going to multiply the two numbers on the right. So that's going to be 3 times 4. And that gets us 12. In the next step, we're going to add and subtract these numbers to figure out which one gets us the middle number of the original factoring problem. And of course, in this case, again, it's the number 16. So we're going to take the largest number, 12, and add it to 3. That gets us 15. That's not 16. Let's keep going. 12 minus 3 is equal to 9. Also not 16. So we're going to keep going. The next phase of the investigation, we're actually going to use those same two pairs that we started with, but we're going to reverse what we multiply. So this time we're going to multiply the 1 and the 4, getting us 4. And we're going to multiply the 3 and the 3, getting us 9. And again, we're just going to add and subtract those two numbers to see which one gets us that 16. So the larger number, 9 plus 4, is equal to 13, not 16. And then 9 minus 4 is equal to 5, also not 16. This time, we're going to keep using that 1, 3 pair. But since we know that the 3, 4 pair doesn't work, we're going to move on to the 2, 6 pair. And again, this time, we're going to multiply the two left numbers. So in this case, that's 1 times 2 gets us 2. And we're going to multiply the right numbers, 3 and 6, getting us 18. And just like last time, let's add and subtract see which one gets us that middle number. The larger number here is 18 plus 2 gets us 20, not 16. And then we're going to try 18 minus 2 gets us 16. We found it. Great. <laughs> so now what we're going to do is we're going to take the factoring pair uh, underneath the number 3. In this case, that's 3 and 1. And we're going to put those in front of the x's. And you actually don't have to write the 1 in front of the x. We just know it's already there. And at this point, we know that the 2 and the 6 go in the other two slots. But which one goes where? This is how we know. Well, we know that the outside terms here have to multiply to 18. So that means that the 6 has to go out here. And we also know that the inside terms have to multiply to get us 2. That means that the 2 goes there. All right. I mean, the toughest stuff is done. We're finally ready to move on to the signs. All we have to do is figure out what signs we need to give to 18 and 2 so that when they add together, they equal that negative 16 in the middle. Well, since positive 2 and negative 18 add up to negative 16, 
we know that the signs need to be positive 2 and negative 6. And there you have it. That is the answer to our problem. Well, I hope this helped you out. If you learned something today, go ahead and subscribe and hit the like button. My name is Adam Reich with WonderfulTutor.com. I'll see you next time.